My thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts I think with God. So if we look at the second to last sentence, I choose to have them be replaced by what they were intended to replace. The Course uses the word real thoughts. That's what these private thoughts, that's what attack thoughts, that's what, in this paragraph, my thoughts were intended to replace were my real thoughts. If you think of my, if you think, oh, I have real thoughts, that's just the light in your mind. And all of the junk, all of the darkness that's been heaped on top of that would be the private thoughts, the attack thoughts. Or in this case, what he's, he's calling them is my thoughts. This is a real early lesson. As you go along in the lessons, you will cease to call attack thoughts my thoughts. <laughs> you will, we already talk about them as ego thoughts. But this is such an early lesson that he's speaking as if it's directly at the deceived mind. Number five, I am never upset for the reason I think. I am never upset for the reason I think because I am constantly trying to justify my thoughts. I am constantly trying to make them true. So if we just substitute what we just said in place of my thoughts, ego thoughts, it's I am. I am never upset for the reason I think because I am constantly trying to justify ego thoughts. I am constantly trying to make them true. Every time there's an upset or disturbance, or you're upset at another person, or you think something in the world's out of place, or something would be better if it was different, what that is, is that's the, the mind trying to justify the ego thoughts and to make them true and saying, no, the, the problem isn't the ego thought, the problem is the world. The problem is my radiator just broke on my car. The problem is I have a sore toe or a sore tooth. The problem is so-and-so didn't do what they said they were going to do. You, know, you, you can see the enormous variety of projections that can take place, but all of those little scenarios are basically the, the the underlying thought beneath all of those is if something were different in the world I'd be happy <laughs> and this lesson is saying no no it's, you're not upset for for that reason you're just trying to make the ego thoughts true and justify them I make all things my enemies so that my anger is justified and my attacks are warranted I have not realized how much I have misused everything I see by assigning this role to it. I have done this to defend a thought system that has hurt me and that I no longer want. I am willing to let it go. The deceived mind justifies and protects the ego as if it were its own child. And Jesus uses that metaphor in the text where he talks about you react to your ego much the way um, animals in nature react to their offspring. You made it, you think you love it, and you try to protect it. And it hurts your mind. <laughs> is what the, the teaching is. You're protecting and you're trying to, to guard and make real something that's hurting you. That's insane. That's cuckoo. That's the definition of a deceived mind. Cuckoo. I'm willing to let it go. Number six. I am upset because I see what is not there. 
Reality is never frightening. It is impossible that it could upset you, upset me. Reality me brings only perfect peace. When I am upset, it is always because I have replaced reality with illusions I made up. The illusions are upsetting because I have given them reality, and thus regard reality as an illusion. Nothing in God's creation is affected in any way by this confusion of mine. I am always upset by nothing. Great little line that last sentence is to carry around. I'm always upset by nothing. You say, do I believe it? Mm. Let's go through my first 25 lessons here and go through the metaphysics again and see if, if I believe that I'm always upset by nothing. Because if I can really see that, then I'll cease to be upset because I'll see it as nothing. sentences five and six in that little paragraph five, five says when I am upset it is always because I have replaced reality with illusions I made up that's the belief in separation that the belief that I have replaced reality with illusions I made up the illusions are upsetting because I have given them reality and thus regard reality as an illusion How do you give illusions reality? By believing in them. That's the only way, that's how you endow something with reality. If you believe in a unicorn, then in your experience, unicorns have reality. If you believe in Shangri-La, then Shangri-La, in your experience, has reality. Does it have reality in heaven? No. Neither unicorns nor Shangri-La. <laughs> but again, to the deceived mind, that is how powerful the mind is. It, it, what it believes, it sees. And it thinks has existence. There you go. Take you anything, anything that can can be imagined. Purple clouds, the blaze. It's funny how when children have imaginary friends, people kind of will giggle and laugh at them, as if there are real people <laughs> in their lives, and then there are the imaginary friends. But real friends. Real friends and imaginary friends. And what this is teaching us is they're all imaginary. They're all imaginary. Including the one you think you are. Is that right? Including the one you think you are. Oh, here we go. We're getting into time. The first time lesson, number seven. I see only the past. So we've just had it referred to in lesson six. I'm upset because I see what is not there, and now in lesson seven, past. So if you put six and seven to, together, the past is not there. <laughs> You're seeing something that's over and done and gone. That's pretty twisted, you know, and that's why that's our first time lesson, but that's why we need to look at time, because time's at the bottom of all of this illusion. As I look about, I condemn the world I look upon. Now that can seem a bit extreme. You know, it's like I was saying the other day, it's like when you wake up, it's not like you say, you see a door handle and you, you think, Jesus, I am not condemning this door handle. <laughs> as in my lesson for the day says, as, you, as I look about, I condemn the world I look upon. I'm not condemning this shoe. I'm looking out, I'm seeing the trees. I don't feel like I'm condemning them today. But 
Yes, as long as there's ordering of thoughts, as long as there's any judgment, as long as there's any preferences, what I look upon, I am condemning. Trees, door handles, shoes, <laughs> carpet, much less certain persons that I seem to come in contact with, which is more of an overt sense of you know, being condemning or having a, a harsh tone with someone is thought of as being condemning, much less condemning a, a door handle. I call this seeing. I hold the past against everyone and everything, making them my enemies. In other words, I make that door handle my enemy. 